I'm Kathleen Klan, and I'm an HIV doctor since 1988. And between 1988 and 1998, I took care of a thousand people, more than a thousand people who died of AIDS. They were my patients. I was connected to them. I cared about them, and they were very important to me. And ever since then, I feel like they are still with me. I'm filming this interview to connect with you about the idea of testing people in your practice so that we are all together as a community of practice in the U.S. working to end that epidemic. When people are at the doctor's office, is a time when they're thinking about their health and introducing the idea of getting a test, maybe something that people have never thought about before, that they might be at risk for HIV. That's the moment. It's the teachable moment. It's the reachable moment to be able to connect with people around the benefits for them of having a test done. So I want to tell you about a patient that I saw last Friday in my clinic. Her name's Rosa. She's 48. She came into our emergency department because she had a urinary tract infection that wouldn't go away. She got offered an HIV test in the emergency department, and it was positive. She was completely surprised by that, had no idea that she was at risk. And when she came to see me last Friday, one of the questions that she asked me was, how come nobody ever asked me to be tested before? So we know as primary care providers that the Rosas actually are rare. I'm not going to tell you that HIV is the most common illness you're going to diagnose in people you take care of because it's not. But it is one that we have a cheap and easy and available and very effective test to be able to find. And for every Rosa that we find, we're able to prevent a tragedy, prevent someone from dying early, and prevent someone from spreading an illness to the people that they love. So I think providers wonder whether it really makes sense to screen for HIV in primary care. Because the truth is, it's much rarer than the other illnesses that we screen for most often in primary care. But it's totally worth it. And there are really three main reasons. The first one is that the truth is that the testing program that we have in place now in the U.S. is not working. We've not been able to make a dent in the epidemic. 50% of the people who we do diagnose with tests already have an AIDS diagnosis. That means they've been sick for a decade, sick themselves and losing a chance to get better and also spreading the virus. So we need to do something different and additional to find people. Second reason is because people in a primary care relationship, because that's really primary care is about a relationship of care, they are more likely to consent to a test when they're asked by their primary care provider. And that's because when we ask people in a primary care relationship about taking a test, they know that you know them and that you're not stigmatizing them. So they're more likely to say yes. And the third reason is that primary care is really well adapted to do an array of tests, screens, advice. And we have systems in place so that we can remember whether or not people are due for a flu shot. And that network, that safety net of making sure that we have systems in place to, to get those pieces of care done exists there when it doesn't exist in other places. What I recommend to people is that you look at the protocol in your clinic and that whenever you are drawing blood on a new patient or a physical exam patient, you look at whether they've had an HIV test in their lifetime, and if they haven't, you add the HIV panel. It's a very cheap test covered by most insurance at this point and on the verge of being approved by the U.S. Preventive Health Services Task Force. So for all those reasons, really inserting it into your normal flow for your new patients and your history and physicals, easiest way to do it. You'll remember it and it will make sense to the patient. Providers worry about the time it's going to take in their day to screen people for HIV. Part of that fear, I think, comes from their remembering the days when we were required to do a lot of counseling, pre-test counseling and post-test counseling. The truth is we're not actually required to do that anymore, anything beyond the normal discussion that we have with people about ordering a test, a regular consent. So that can be very quick. Uh, for instance, what I generally say to people is, Hey, in, in our office, we recommend screening for everybody. If you've never had an HIV test before, we'd like to go ahead and add it. It can be as simple as that. People need to know that you're ordering the test, but you don't need to do 5, 10, 15 minutes of counseling around it. You, it's, in fact, better if you just include it in the normal flow. The other thing that providers worry about is what if it's positive and I have to disclose to somebody, I have to tell them that they had a positive result. That is a big deal. I'm not going to say it's not a big deal. But there are a couple things. One is that it will not be a surprise. It will be because you're going to send this as a routine test, you're going to know some days before this patient comes back in to get their result. So you'll have time to plan, you'll have time to think about it, and you'll have time to have somebody there with you if you have resources to that, a social worker or somebody else. 
It's not good news for anybody, but it is not a death sentence. And so what you'll be sharing is you have this illness and there is treatment for it. And you can anticipate being able to live a productive and long and healthy life, even though you have this virus. I think all those things really make a difference when you're thinking about what if I do have to disclose a positive result. With the tools that we have at this moment, we don't need anything else. With the tools we have at this moment, we could shut down the epidemic in the U.S. We could, within 13 or 15 years, be in a place where there are no new infections, where we have the opportunity for an AIDS-free generation in the U.S. It would take every one of us as practitioners thinking about that possibility and bringing our own efforts to bear. The most important one for primary care providers being thinking about it and advocating to be able to test every patient in their practice. As a group of clinicians who came of age in the beginning of the epidemic and are finishing our careers at the end of the epidemic, we could take it out with us. I'm excited by that opportunity, and I think every one of us has a part that we could play in making that happen.